<clears throat> Proverbs 18, verse 1 is our passage for today. As we continue our series here in Proverbs entitled Wisdom for Life, uh, the last two weeks, I believe, we have been talking about seeking counsel and counsel and how all that stuff kind of works. We're continuing that, um, that little topic within this study this week and next week. But Proverbs 18, verse 1. Um, honestly, man, <clears throat> I had almost considered doing just a study on Proverbs 18 because I love it so much. It's probably probably my favorite proverb. There's just tons of uh, gut punches in this um, in this chapter that that really ministered to me over the last couple years. And I mean, it's all over the place. Uh, talks about you know he he who finds a wife finds a good thing. This the verse we're going to look at today. You know, not speaking out of turn considering all things there's just all kind of all kind of goodies in this chapter uh, <clears throat> but yeah let's go ahead and read it proverbs 18 verse 1 says whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire he breaks out against all sound judgment that is the word of the lord may the lord bless the reading and hearing of his word now what i wanted to kind of the, the initial thought I wanted to bring to mind is, is anyone familiar, I'm sure some of y'all are, the phrase, a hard head makes a soft behind. Anybody heard that? Yeah? No? Hard head makes a soft behind? And so, uh, yeah, so I guess not. Some of y'all have, some of y'all haven't. So what this phrase refers to is unruly children who continually disobey, right, hard-headed, and continually get spanked, right, soft behind. Hard head makes a soft behind. Now, uh, my dad had a another variation of it that's kind of says the same thing essentially, but uh, had more so to deal with what we refer to as ergonomics, or I guess what the kids today call life hacks, right? Easier, simpler ways of doing things. Uh, my dad would would you know if I if he gave me a task to do at the house like cutting the grass, chopping wood, trimming trees, like just little things that were manual labor labor-intensive types of things around the house, <clears throat> he would suggest, right, I'm already upset because I have to do this work, right, as a teenager, but um, he's like, hey, you should probably do that this way. And I'm like, Dad, I, I got it. I'll, you know, I, I'll take care of it, right? And, of course, his way was probably better, but since I, I didn't come up with the idea, I didn't want to do it, right? Um, and so he'd say, okay. And he'd say, a hard head makes a soft back. That's what he would tell me. It's like, yeah, you, you want to work harder and wear your back out as you're working, or do you want to do it the right way? He would kind of tell, tell me that way, right? In other words, you can either work hard or you can work smart. <clears throat> and the, the example I like to give people when it comes to these sorts of things, like doing things efficiently or, um, or, or with ergonomics, that sort, of, that sort of thought, I think about like a lumberjack. I know we don't have those around here, but if you've ever chopped wood, you, you all know it's, it's way easier to chop wood with a sharp axe versus one that's, that's not, that's dull, right? Or a chainsaw that's well lubricated, right? It's easier to, to cut the, um, chop, chop up the wood when, when you have the right tools versus the tools that don't operate the way that they could at their maximum efficiency. So why do I bring this up, right, concerning the verse we're talking about? Well, I'm all for hard work. I, I love it. I think it's the masculine mandate right we are called as men to work hard uh, that was before the fall we are called to work i mean and there's all types of work not everything is labor intensive but we should be working heartily unto the lord that's that's the call for all of us uh, but i'm not for unnecessarily working hard like if, if i don't have to if there's an easier way to do something and it has the same result we should try to search those things out i think about that because Back before Wayne so graciously started cutting the grass for us, we would push mow all the, the, the church lot. We would push mow it. And for those of you who have cut the grass before, you recognize how deceptively large this lot is. Like, it doesn't look that big just when you look at it, but when you're cutting it with a little 22-inch cut mower, hours, hours, right? And so the, the thought that comes to mind is if I'm out here push mowing this lot with my little push mower, and Wayne comes up with his trailer, zero turn, weed eaters, all this stuff. And he's, hey, man, let me cut the grass. No, 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 I got it. I, I'll take care of it. I'm, I'm going to take care of it, right? I, I, can, I can do that. Well, he's just presented a way easier way to go about it versus the way that it can both, they can both be done, right? But if I believe my way is better, 
than, than his way. Oh, this is, is going to be a cleaner cut or it's going to be whatever. I try to re rationalize it in my head. It's, it's foolish of me, especially in the middle of summer, especially when there's so many other things that can be done and how much time it can save, how much, you know, if, if I'm out here by myself in the middle of summer trying to cut this grass, one of y'all may end up finding me face down out there, you know, because it's, it's too much to try to cut all this grass. <clears throat> but, like I said, if I'm the type of person that always knows better, I know what I know, and that's all I'm going to do, I have isolated myself, and I've broken out against all sound judgment, as our verse talks about. Uh, it's, it's, it's funny, I was kind of thinking about this, I'm like, yeah, like if, if I've isolated myself from everyone, right, I've lost sight of even what we see in Genesis when God said it's not good for man to be alone, right? That's specifically speaking about a wife, but it, realistically, it's about communal living and relationships that we form. I, I'm, I'm so lost to just think that I can do this by myself if that's where my mind goes, right? All of us need lots of help, all of us. We need wise counsel to guide us, and we need it in a far greater way than any of us will ever realize. So what we must do is recognize that the word of God along with this body of believers, this local fellowship that he's given us, is what God has ordained for us to grow in godliness so that, as Paul says, we can walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing to the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. That's Colossians 1, 10 through 12. Now with that in mind, let's go ahead and pray. We've set the tone for our discussion today. Let's go ahead and pray and ask God to bless our time, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for how you've shown us who you are in so many ways. Uh, we are lost without you, but with you we have found everything that we need. We found life, we found hope, we found freedom, we found purpose. Um, we can go on and on, but ultimately, Lord, we have found you, and we know you, and we can rejoice in the goodness that you are, knowing that this life that we live ha has a greater purpose, and we can share this good news with one another and be um, blessed by it and, and live our life to the full. Lord, with this in mind, I ask that you bless this time and allow your word to minister to our hearts. Uh, may this discussion be honoring to you, glorifying to you, and edifying to your people. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, so we will read the verse again. Proverbs 18, verse 1. No handout today, sorry. But uh, Proverbs 18, 1 is our verse, so here it is. Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. Now, as I was looking at this in the, uh, I don't read Hebrew, right, at all. But as I was looking at this, it, it's six words. It's 14 words in English. It's six words in Hebrew. And so because of that, I'm going to kind of break it up that way as we walk through it. We're going to look at a couple of the words individually and how they break into these English words. Uh, so the first word that we find is, what we get the first three words from, whoever isolates himself. This is an individual word here. This is the very first word uh, in the original language. And it means, or it's defined as single, soul, divided, spread away from, to separate oneself from others, disperse, divide, or to be out of joint. Uh, the way this word, you see it used in the Old Testament, it's used in these ways, in these words, excuse me, separate, divide, part, scattered abroad, dispersed, severed, stretched. Now, one of the, the first one that I found that I thought really spoke to how this word, ice, whoever isolates himself, what that speaks to specifically here was Genesis 25, 23. This is when Isaac and Rebecca are pregnant and uh, the Lord speaks to her and tells her about the two babies in her womb. And he says this, and the Lord said to her, Rebecca, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you shall be divided. Is that same word, shall be divided. Uh, the one shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. Now, I, I know oftentimes when we think of this word isolate, isolation, that sort of thing, we, we tend to think of like, I need some peace and quiet. I just need to 
isolate myself from all the noise and confusion in this world or in, in this time. I just need to kind of like cleanse my palate or whatever. Uh, but that's not what this word is referring to. This word carries the meaning of forceful or intentional separation or severing. That's, that's what this word means. And so to try to wrap my mind around isolate, just since there's so many ways that word can be defined in English, the word that, that came to mind for me when I was thinking, how, how could this word, um, how could the weight or intensity of this word really speak to me versus the word isolate? Well, the only word that I could think of that kind of carries that same kind of weight and negative connotation would be uh, divorce, right? Whoever divorces himself from others is the way that my mind works. It's like, yeah, that's a very serious thing, and that's a, the, the grasp of that or the, the weight of that. We understand the gravity of it. Now, uh, we know this because we see this is what the word means, and then also many other translations word it the same way. So I wanted to give you a couple of those, just four examples. So the NIV translates this verse this way. When it talks about uh, whoever isolates himself, um, that the verse in the NIV says this, an unfriendly person pursues selfish ends and against all sound judgment starts quarrels. The New Living Translation says an unfriendly person or excuse me, unfriendly people carry, care only about themselves. They lash out against, uh, they lash out at common sense. Uh, the New American Standard Bible says it this way. One who separates himself seeks his own desire. He quarrels against all sound wisdom. Excuse me. And then this other, this, on this website, Bible Hub, they've got basically any English translation you can find. There's like 40, 50 of them. There's tons of them. And I was kind of looking through them, and they all said similar things to what these verses have said so far. Uh, but there's this other one called the Brenton Septuagint Translation, which um, takes the Old Testament Greek and translates it into English. <clears throat> and it, it words it this way. A man who wishes to separate from friends seeks excuses, but at all times he will be liable to reproach. Okay, so these are all different ways that this verse has been translated into English and how to help us understand this isolation is not a good thing, right? Uh, another way to think of isolation is when we think about prisons and solitary confinement, right? If someone is a danger to themselves and others, they isolate them. They put them in these, in these um, cells where they're in there for 23 hours a day. They get one, day of, one, one hour of uh, time outside of that cell, but they have been isolated from everyone else, right? That's, that's what we're referring to when we're talking about to isolate oneself. Um, now, when we think of that sort of isolation in light of who we are, when someone decides to isolate, isolate themselves, uh, I think we can all agree and understand that it's really hard to reason with that person, right? When someone has kind of separated themselves, trying to talk, whether it's your spouse, a child, parent, friend, whatever, Right? When you're trying to reach out to that person, it's really difficult to reason with them when they've already started that separation process. Uh, the reason why is because they've convinced themselves, knowingly or unknowingly, that their decision is what is best for them. And this is usually to the detriment of those around them. Now, before we move on to our next word in this list, when we think about whoever isolates himself, isolation, just that word there, did anybody have any thoughts or comments, any concerns, any clarifications that I need to make before we continue? <laughs> Does anybody have any isolated comments? Feel free to ask. I mean, that's what we're here for, right? To study the Bible. Okay. All right. So the next word, whoever isolates himself seeks. This is the next word here. Whoever isolates himself Seeks. Now, this means to aim at, practice, seek to find, require, request, uh, begging, or to procure. Uh, I, I found one of the words that, another, excuse me, another verse that uses uh, this same word, I think speaks to this well as, as well. Um, Proverbs 17.9, right? It's just a few, few verses back from Proverbs 18.1. It says this, whoever covers an offense seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates close friends. Now, the, the providential thing about this verse, I didn't, I didn't realize this till this morning, uh, separates is the same word as isolation in the original language, and then this seeks word is the same word we're speaking to here. So 
it's using these as polar opposites, right? Whoever is seeking after something versus someone who isolates, right, runs from. It's like we're, we're separating here. This one, they're trying to bring them together, okay? So in other words, what this verse is, Proverbs 17, 9 is saying, whoever covers an offense, aims at, is trying to practice, or is seeking to love their neighbor. That, that's the goal of that person. I, they're, they, that's what they seek. They're, they're striving after this, okay? Um, let me see where am I at now. Yeah, that, that brought to mind this, right? When I'm thinking about this word seek, and in light of Proverbs 18.1, whoever seeks or whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. When we think about that, think about any time you and someone have gotten to a, a, an argument, whether, like I said, whether it's your spouse, your kids, your parents, friends, whatever, and there's, there's an argument about something, you're, you're certain that you're right, right? You're upset, your emotions are flaring because they're wrong. You're right and they're wrong, right? So what do you, what do, you do when you call someone to reach out? You are seeking to find someone who will tell you that you're right and that your, your, whoever you're arguing with is wrong, right? That's what we tend to do. I see some smiles, so I know that's what we do, right? We do that. It's like, I, I need you to tell them how wrong they are, right? That's, that's where we're, our, oftentimes our mind goes, right? We are seeking someone to confirm what we believe is right. Now, unfortunately, in those moments, are you, all you are doing is seeking affirmation more so than the truth. Th that's what we're doing when we do that. We want to justify our emotions, right? We want to justify why we're upset. This person has upset me for these reasons. I need you to make sure that, that, I'm, that I know that I'm good in this moment. But if we are seeking affirmation and not truth, we're, we're seeking after the wrong things, right? What did Jesus say in John 8, 31 and 32? He said, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. We cannot isolate ourselves and think that, we, it, think that it is possible to seek the truth at the same time. We, we can't do both. Those are on opposite ends of the spectrum um, because we, we need each other. And be, when we get convinced of something, there's no reasoning with us. Uh, something that I, I found out recently, just kind of looking into like psychological, physiological stuff, is when you're calm, your brain is in like logical mode, right? That's, that's the way we think. When you get upset, your brain like shifts its thought process into the emotional side of your thinking. And so you go from like seeing A plus B equals C to there is no way A plus B equals C. Like you just, your brain shifts when you get upset. And so there's no real reasoning with a person who's in that, that condition. Um, James talks about that, right? There is uh, the, the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Like whenever we are in that mode, there is obviously a righteous anger, but when our mind goes, in, when it shifts and we, we don't realize it's doing it, that trigger sends us into irrational thought. That, that, that's what happens to us. And so then in our irrationality, we want confirmation that what we're doing is okay. Like this is okay for me to feel this way because this person did this. But that's isolating. That's not seeking love. That's not um, trying to find truth. Like, but that's, that's what we tend to do. Um, and that's, that's the problem, right? Once I've isolated myself, I'm not seeking love. I'm not seeking uh, the glory and honor of God. I am seeking my own desires, as our verse tells us. Now, once again, I feel like I've got to say this, but like isolation is not referring to, man, I, I need peace and quiet to study, right? Because I needed plenty of that for this week. Uh, it's not your personal quiet time. This is all about I have cut people off because they've either done something to me or they have nothing to offer me, right? It's like it's a severing of relationships or it's a distancing from people uh, because of your perceived um, thoughts towards them, which are, which are unloving. This person can't offer me any, any help, so I'm going to push them away. Now, once again, as we talk about seeks, that's the, the word seek doesn't carry any negative connotation, but whatever we're seeking, right? If, if I've isolated myself, I'm already starting from a faulty foundation. Now, once I've started from this faulty foundation, wherever I'm going from there is going to be off. It's kind of like if you got a gun and you're trying to sight it in and the sights are off and, and the ground is unlevel. You're not going to get a good, accurate shot from that because the base is off. But if the base is secure and square and all that, 
it makes it that much easier to ensure the accuracy of, um, of the trajectory of that, that bullet. <clears throat> so, it's, so it was the same with us, right? If, if, if we've isolated ourselves, we're already starting at, a, at, a, at the wrong place, and then whatever we seek after is going to be wrong. Okay, we can only seek after our own desires. And so that's what this verse tells us. So it's in these moments that this man or this woman has isolated himself. Um, he can only seek after or pursue or aim at his own desires. Now, his own desires is another singular word in the original language. Uh, this can be uh, translated as desire, wish, longings, uh, excuse me, longings of the heart. Uh, lust, appetite, covetousness. Now, it, it covers both godly desires and sinful desires. It's just, just a neutral word. But here specifically, right, with the context, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desires. This is letting us know that this is selfish in nature. This isn't a, a godly desire uh, for this individual. What it's telling us is in his arrogance, this man has isolated himself to seek his own desires. Now, I know when I first read this, um, this verse, like even years ago, my initial thought was like this was more about someone who's like gets upset or depressed and just like books it. And then they've isolated themselves that way. And I do believe that's uh, and they shut everyone out. Right. I think we, we all know people who, who tend to do that sort of thing. If they get their their. Um, you know, they're very volatile in their in the way they operate. And so they get really happy. They're really happy. If they're really sad, they just shut down. Uh, and that's in, in one real sense, that's an application of this verse. Uh, it can it can be true of that. Uh, but I think more so this is this is someone who's refer, uh, refusing to humble themselves and, and recognize the gifts that God has given his church. This person's better than them. They, because they, they got nothing to offer. So I, all, I, all I know is my own desires are what's right. So I'm going to isolate myself from all these other people uh, and, and pursue these own desires. So that's, that's more so what this um, verse is, is referring to. Like I said, the, the other side can be that. I think all of us, if we've experienced any tragedy in our life, like there is a moment where we isolate, right? If you've lost a really close family member, if you've experienced some crazy tragedy, your thoughts are all over the place. You, you can't think straight. You just kind of need some time to yourself. That's, that's natural to, to feel that way. Job did that, right? He separated himself in a sense and ripped his clothes, put ash, uh, ashes and sackcloth on and just kind of sat there for weeks, right? That's, that's what he did. That, that's completely understandable, right? That's not what we're referring to. But I think what we have to recognize is <clears throat> in all that Job did, he did not sin. But far often, far more often with us, when we go into those modes, it, it teeters over into, into sin. You know, it teeters over into a selfish, uh, selfishness, right? It goes from just mourning to now I'm going to start kind of like, well, this person hasn't reached out or this person hasn't done this. And it turns into bitterness and anger versus just pure sorrow. Okay. And so that's what we need to be aware of because once we've, Tilt, tilt it over into that and it turns into bitterness, anger and sorrow, uh, bitterness and anger instead of sorrow. Now we've isolated ourselves and, and we only seek our own desires, right? We've convinced ourselves that this is okay and we break out, as the verse says, we break out against all sound judgment. We, we've decided in our hearts already what's right and, and ultimately it's not. Uh, so yeah, so we gotta, we gotta really be careful with where we end up in that because all of us are gonna fall into these times uh, but we can't allow ourselves to fall into sin in the midst of them. But that's what tends to happen, right? People get upset, they get angry, they get depressed, and then that's when they stop answering calls, they stop showing up to church, they uh, stop answering texts, they shut people out, right? They have isolated themselves, okay? <clears throat> now, the, the question, if you're here today and this is something that, that's habitual in your life or you catch yourself doing it, this is a question you must ask yourself. Okay, when it comes to, to this sort of isolation, how can the rest of us, right, who are part of this body, right, we're all different members of this body, how can we bear one another's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ, right, showing love to you as the hurting member of this body? How can we mourn with those who mourn if you do not allow us to bear that burden with you, allow us to mourn with you as you're mourning? 
right? It, it, we, we can't, we can't do it. And so therefore now, like, it's gone from sorrow, pain, suffering, to isolation, bitterness, uh, resentment, all that stuff, right? It's gone from a godly thing that got, got Jesus wept, right? It's gone from that to an ungodly thing. Uh, and it, it happens that quick. It's that quick for it to happen. Um, so we, we must be willing to spread that burden out amongst uh, the body. Listen to what 1 Peter 5, verses 6 through 11 says. <clears throat> it says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood around or throughout the world. And after you have suffered for a little while, right, sometimes the suffering seems longer than a little while, but in light of eternity, it's just our entire life is but a, a vapor, okay? After you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now before we go on, do we have any thoughts or comments or anything on that part? Yes, ma'am. Be around people.
Thank you, sis. Yeah, I, I, it's uh, like a, it's not scripture, but like there's that, that phrase where it says, um, you know, when, when grief, grief is divided, right? Like when there's a group of people that love each other, like the grief is divided, uh, but then the joy is multiplied. You know, like you're able to bear that with one another and it, it doesn't remove the pain, but then it, it spreads itself around for where everyone's able to mourn together. Uh, but then when there's joy, it's, it's multiplied, you know, and, but if we're not intimately involved in each other's lives, no one, no one would know either way. And so it's, it's, it's really important for us to, to be, to be there for each other. Like you, like you mentioned, pastor, you're going to say something. Say something. Yeah, isolation is is uh, is terrible, um, and but we're all we're all prone to get there. That that's the thing. Like it just takes one, uh, you know, as Paul said, a little leaven leavens the whole lump, right? If we let one false word seep in and take root, it'll flourish and and produce whatever. And and all it takes is gossip, slander, uh, anything, you know. Um, if, if I was talking to one of you and I said, man, this person never does this right, you know, and I just say that I, out of frustration. Well, then they're like, man, if he said it, like, yeah, maybe. The, and then they're going to be looking for that in that person the next time. Oh, yeah, he was right. They never do that. And then, boom, this just drives a wedge between people. Yeah, he's that's just who he is or that's who she is. That's all that's all it can do. All it can do is pollute, you know, if. if garbage comes out like all it can do is taint what god has made beautiful you know with within the the local body so yeah absolutely we can't can't isolate as pastor said the isolation is a form of discipline from first corinthians 5 when you know the guy's like sleeping with his father or his mother-in-law they kick him out of the church in the hopes that satan will destroy his flesh and he'll be saved for the, the day of the lord um all that is is the reality it's we're not designed to just pick ourselves up by our bootstraps. I mean, that's, that's not how a body operates, right? If, if a, an appendage gets cut off, if it gets severed or separated from the body, it's going to die. It's going to, it's not going to survive. I mean, we have to reattach it and the, that heart needs to pump that blood back to that area and nurse it back to health. All right. We, go ahead. It is, it's 
very easy to do, especially during tragedies. Like it's so, so easy to do. Uh, I, I think I've, I think I told the trade guys this a while back because uh, you know Lena was having her seizure. It's almost been two years now since she's had her last one. Thank God. But like during that storm, like I was, I'm, I'm the extrovert, right? So I'm like posting all kind of stuff online. I'm sharing stuff with people. Um, and I don't know if it came across as if I was fine, uh, but I wasn't. I hope it didn't come across that way. But um, a lot of women reached out to Devin. Like a lot of women reached out to her and helped her. And, you know, not that we play balance games, but like on my end, I didn't feel like there was as much. And so like there was like anger, like bitterness that was starting to take root in my heart. And I was like, man, I've reached out to most of these guys when they've gone through stuff and where's the return, you know, like I, it, it felt that way, just being, being honest. And so came back to church one day for something and um, it was Wayne in particular, like he talked to me outside and he was like, man, I wanted to, I wanted to read, it was just, it was hard, you know, it was hard to, to even press the, the sin button because I was so broken up when I think about my own daughter. And so I was like, here I am isolating myself in these thoughts that no one really cares for me and there he, he was he did you know others did and we, we're all human and so I understand like I'm I'm pa I'm over that in the sense that like I've taken those thoughts make them obedient to Christ but it doesn't change the fact that if I let myself continue to go down that route it would have just taken root and really festered within me uh, but I now I get it like going through that I get how easily people can get offended about something and you don't realize it and it just it settles and then it never goes away until something brings it back to the surface and then it it, it blows up like well you never did this for me when I was going through my and it's like where did this come from you know and so yeah I get it 100% understand like I fully fully get it um, but that that's what happens when we isolate ourselves you know um, it, it's it happens that easily so now let's look at the second half of the verse um, whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire he breaks out against all sound judgment we're gonna kinda look at that all at one time I think it's I believe it's three words yeah it's three words he breaks out against all and sound judgment those are the three words there in the original so what does break out against me because we look at those other translations and it talks about quarreling and all these other things well this this phrase break out against as the ESV translates it uh, refers to contention quarreling strife lashing out that's how this word is used and how it's translated uh, the way I if I was to define it it would be this it is a forceful and intentional action taken against someone and their desire to help right it is a forceful intentional action taken against someone and their desire to help right you have settled in your mind that you're right everyone else is telling you you're right and let's be honest you don't care what anyone else thinks even if they don't think you're right um, or I'm sorry not everyone's telling you right everything you see is telling you you're right uh, and you don't care what anyone else thinks if they don't agree because you're right right like I've convinced myself I'm right everything I'm seeing and reading and hearing is telling me that I'm right and then if someone doesn't believe me, whatever, that's on them, right? I am, I am right, right? This is, this, is the way, this is that isolated uh, way of thinking, right? I've isolated myself, seeking my own desires, and it has it is convinced me, right? I've built this barrier around myself. I am the, the pinnacle of truth, right? That, that's, that's where we go to in our heads. Whether we say it or not, that's where we stir in our hearts, and that's why we get bitter and frustrated and all of that. Now, something to keep in mind, um, kind of like how I mentioned what I mentioned, I forget what I mentioned earlier, but just the way the brain works, right? There's, you know, um, there's biblical information, knowledge, wisdom, and then we, we have our, what's called natural law, things we see in the world, uh, that God has put in place and in their order that don't necessarily are written specifically in the word, but they're, they're, they're true, right? Like we see how things operate in the world, gravity, right? Um, the way we breathe, the trees breathe out, oxygen breathe in, right? We don't have, we don't read that in the Bible, but we know that these things are true, right? So 
<clears throat> if, if it's true, it's because God said it's true. So I'm, that's what I'm trying to get across. But as far as using these sorts of things to confirm what we are teaching, that's what I'm getting across. So more often than not, when I, when I think about me being right, the things that I see that are right, right? If, if when I get in that train of thought, this is what's happening uh, in one sense, right? Most of us use social media or get on the internet in some form or fashion. And so there's this thing called the algorithm that kind of takes your patterns and molds the things you see to your way of thinking, okay? Uh, that's how an algorithm works. And so more often than not, if you're surfing the phone, your web, the web on your phone, you're going through social media accounts, whatever, your news articles, uh, the advertisements, the opinion pieces that are posed, they are all within your way of thinking, right? You're gonna get a lot of the same stuff, right? If you're left wing, you're gonna get left wing stuff. If you're right wing, you're gonna get lots of right, right wing stuff. That's just the way the internet works because they're trying to get you to look at it. They know you're interested in these things. Uh, now, that, uh, that fits with who we are because these scientists and engineers have figured out this is the way we, we think, this is the way the, the mind works. Um, and, and as humans, as selfish people, they understand we like confirmation, right? They understand that. So they're gonna feed you stuff that, that you already believe and they're gonna convince you that that's, this is what's true, right? So you can have two people, different beliefs, they're gonna get on social media and to see two completely different points of view and they're both gonna think they're right, okay? Because that's the way this stuff works. Now this is called uh, confirmation bias. That's one way to look at this, confirmation bias. Uh, we, we want to believe that we're right and we're gonna find things that affirm that for us. Okay, I've confirmed this through this news outlet that this is right, right? If I'm, whatever, right? Whatever news stations, I don't wanna throw those out there, but that's co confirmation bias. It's a person's tendency to process information by looking for or interpreting information that is consistent with their existing beliefs. A huge way you see this is in sports, right? Like, that wasn't a catch or that wasn't a, what you know, that was a foul, like, you know, and two people are watching the same thing and the, one person's a fan of this team, they're gonna see this, we want one person's a fan of the other team, they're gonna see it that way. It's confirmation bias, right? That's, that's the way it all, you can see that every single play of every single game, that should have been a foul, that should have been this, that should have, that was out of bounds, that was inbounds. Confirmation bias influences that, whether we realize it or not. Now, one way Christians do this, if we were to make this, like, you know, bring this back to a, a, a spiritual thing, Christians oftentimes look for signs. We look for signs, right? I, Lord, I need an answer. Just show me what you want me to do. Give me a sign so I know, right, I can have peace about making this decision. This is this is what we do, right? If you're looking for, a, you know, you're, you, there's somebody presented with, with a new job and it's in the field of making teddy bears, right? You're gonna see teddy bears everywhere. And it's gonna be like, you know what? This, this, was God's, this is what God's will for me. I see teddy bears everywhere. This is a sign he's given me, right? Silly, but that's what we do. Uh, now that, right, what I just mentioned, like this thing is brought up, now I see it everywhere. Um, that's not so much confirmation bias, but what that term is called, it's another term that I'm throwing out there because I like these weird terms, is the uh, the batter Meinhof phenomena, right? The the batter Meinhof phenomena. Now, what that is is like we got that white Highlander, right? Once we got it, see it everywhere, right? See it everywhere. I'm like, hey, look, there's another, one. there's another one. Like, where are all these? Where did all these white Highlanders come from, right? Or you get a new pair of shoes and you you see them everywhere, right? Whatever it is, right? If you're a Cowboys fan, right? You're gonna see Cowboys stuff everywhere. If you're Houston Texans fan, you may see it here and there. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. But yeah, you'll see it everywhere, right? Whatever it is, right? That's that phenomenon. It's called a frequency illusion. Uh, we, we see it wherever we go because we want to, right? It's gonna always stand out. Um, but that's, that's the way our mind works, right? If I want this to be right, I'm going to convince myself that this is right. I'll find ways to convince myself it's right, whether it's consciously or subconsciously. That, that's just what we do. Why do I bring that up? Well. We see this in scripture, Jeremiah 17, nine. It tells us the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it, right? Who can understand it? Because we will find a way to justify our feelings. We will find a way to justify anything that we really want deep down. We will justify it, right? You see people in that, that claim to be Christian or maybe are Christian 
and they want to be okay with certain sinful lifestyles, right? And they will search the scripture until they find something that just vaguely resembles what they want to believe, and they'll cling to that as like, this is the ultimate truth. See, this allows me to do this. This is why it's okay for me to whatever. <clears throat> um, people have used all sorts of things to justify all sorts of heinous sins, whether it be homosexuality, transgenderism, uh, polygamy, uh, adultery, all sorts of stuff. You know, all sorts of stuff gets justified through the Bible, or they try to because they've got a, a faulty belief, right? They've isolated themselves. They've, they're seeking their own desire, and that's only going to lead them to breaking out against all sound judgment, right? That base is off. Therefore, anything they do after that is going to be off because they haven't started at the right place. Uh, and like I said, this can happen to anyone. You could be a solid Christian, a, the most loving Christian, the most mature Christian within the church, and in your own desires, you lose sight of godly counsel and wisdom by isolating yourself just ever so slightly, and you, even you, will break out against all sound judgment. It can happen to the best of us, and it will happen to the worst of us. Um, now, if you think you're not susceptible to that, get ready, because God will make it happen, right? Because he gives grace to the humble, but he actively opposes the proud. Uh, that's actually pastor's passage from this morning, right? Yeah, so we're going to hear more about that later. I ain't got to get into that anymore. Uh, but how quickly we forget... James 1, 13 through 15. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by what? His own desire. When he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. So what did our verse say today? Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. Right? What is our own desire? These, these sinful things that lure and entice us. Now that breaks out against all sound judgment, that word there, before we kind of finish our time, uh, sound wisdom, knowledge, skill, efficiency, efficacy, it's all of that stuff. All the, the good and right things is what sound judgment refers to uh, knowing what to do and when to do it that that's that's essentially what that is so i ask the question does wisdom come naturally right are, are, are there some people that are just naturally talented when it comes to wisdom no right no it's learned it's trained it's tested over time now how do we gain wisdom through discipline through discipleship Right? That, that's, that's how we gain wisdom. Well, isn't it the fear of the Lord that's the beginning of wisdom? Absolutely. Right? It is absolutely the fear of the Lord that is the beginning of wisdom. But what does fearing the Lord look like? Loving God, loving his word, and obeying it. Right? That, that's, what, that's what fearing the Lord looks like. Uh, now, part of that obedience is making disciples of all nations. That's the Great Commission. Uh, part of making disciples is being discipled. They go hand in hand. So don't isolate yourself. Don't think too highly of yourself and make sure to heed wise counsel. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12 verses 13 and 14 says this. The end of the matter, uh, all, all has been heard. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every deed into judgment with every secret thing, whether good or evil. So with that in mind, that kind of concludes my study. But I've got two questions for y'all. Um, did y'all have any comments or anything before we go? Yes, sir.
an excellent question. Um, is isolation more than just like physical distance? Can you be in a church and still isolate yourself? Does anybody want to answer that? I mean, I, I will, but yes, why? How, how does that, how, how can you be in the body and not? Same way you can be in a marriage and not present in that marriage. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. Yeah, so it, it, the, the verse could have been worded that way, right? If, if someone isolates himself, he seeks his own desires and breaks out against sound judgment. It's, it's not a matter of, of uh, there's options there, but if you're doing it, it's actively severing relationships, severing connections, um, all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I think that's a good question because there's people that, like we mentioned this, right? They put on their church face, they come in, and they're happy. Oh, God bless you, brother. Too blessed to be stressed. Yeah, it's, everything's great. They leave here, and then it's horrible. And then they don't come for a month or two, and then you find out they're separated or they're whatever. Like the, the woman left, the man left. The, they're in this deep-rooted sin. They're like, how did this happen? Like we were just talking a few weeks ago, and it's like, yeah, the, yeah, this has been going on for a while, and we just didn't want to say anything. It's like you've isolated yourself. I mean, that, that's what you've done. You haven't allowed the body to be the body, um, and, and you've isolated yourself. And it's a, yeah, and as we said, God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. If, if you want to walk through these doors in a, in a proud fashion, because hiding those things is proud, right? If we read First Peter 5, humble yourselves right under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you uh, casting all your anxieties on him if you're not doing that you are being arrogant right and you're because you you got it figured out you got it you know what you're doing you know why you're doing all this this is you know I don't want to worry people with these things no if the Bible commands us to confess these things and bear this burden with one another to not do that and justify why I'm not doing it I know better than God what is that that's arrogance that's pride that that's that's not humility that's that's the worst of the worst uh and so yeah what is is god gonna bless that right that's that's disobedience he's not gonna bless that uh, so yeah it's important for us to to understand that's we're we're to walk by faith right i i don't know what this is gonna what's gonna come of this right i i know i need to confess this i know i need to speak about this i know i need someone to pray for me about this so I'm going to walk in faith, trusting that God is going to sustain me, and I'm going to trust that this person isn't going to burn me, right? That, uh, that, that's a big fear, is I don't want to open up and someone think lowly of me or whatever. Uh, but it's like, no, we're a body. If that person sins against you, well, then there is a process that's in the scriptures in Matthew 18 that you go to them in private. If that doesn't work, you bring someone else along. If that doesn't work, you bring it before the church. So there's, there's contingencies, right? It's not just, hey, you do this and you deal with the consequences. It's, no, there's a body, there's order. Like God has set all this stuff up. He hasn't just thrown you in the deep end of the water to fend for yourself. He's given you instructions on all these different aspects of your life. If you want to know how, how, it's, how you are to live in a wise fashion, you've got these Proverbs. They're, it's all over the place. It's all over the Proverbs. It's all over the New Testament epistles. It's all over there, and if you don't know it, you need someone to disciple you and help you know those things. I mean, that, that's all of this goes together. There's not one part of it that's isolated from the rest of it. All of it fits together. But we only know that if we're in the word, if we're spending time with his people, if we're open and honest and humble, um, we won't get there if we're doing anything else.
So I've got a question. I've got two, but yeah, we'll see if we got time for at least one. <clears throat> um, if you were to, yeah, yeah. If you were to uh, try to reword this verse in a in a positive way, right? This is the negative, right? Whoever isolates himself. If you do these things, this is what you're doing, right? If we were trying to reword this in in a command that in a way that okay, if I don't want to do that, what should I be doing, right? The inverse of this verse. Um, how would you word that, right? Whoever, whoever isolates himself, seeks his own desires, and breaks out of sound, against sound judgment, what would be the opposite of that? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, throwing knot in there changes the whole, the whole thing, right? Uh, well, we talked about it on Wednesday night, this is my, my uh, shameless drop for coming to Wednesday night Bible study, but we talked about Proverbs, I'm sorry, Matthew 16 and 18, uh, the binding and loosing, right? It's, it's oftentimes referenced as like binding Satan and whatever, like, but it's talking about the body of Christ. And so, yeah, whoever binds himself, right, to, to godly counsel, to the, to the body, right, if I've bound myself to them, there is an intimacy there I can't get away from, right? If I'm this close to someone, they're going to smell my breath. You know what I mean? They're gonna, they, they know me in a really intimate way if I'm this close to them, right? I can't get away from that. And so, yeah, if, if I bound myself to the body, right, I will find wisdom, right? I will seek it. I will find all these things that God has given me or called me to. Uh, if, I, if I'm not, if I isolate, I'm severing, but if I'm binding together, right, I'm going to receive those things. Proverbs 13, 20, this was a verse Gary taught on last week. Uh, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. And then Proverbs 15, 22, without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. So, yeah, anybody have any parting thoughts before we finish our time? <clears throat> Yeah, us extroverts, we hide in plain sight. That's what we do. So, yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right, let's close in prayer.